All right. Welcome back to another episode. And in this one, we are going to be talking about the final thoughts on the Gen 4 Koenig Arius. Uh, so you may remember a few weeks ago, I did uh, post my early impressions on this knife where I absolutely loved it. Uh, straight out of the box, right after receiving it, I thought that this knife was what you could probably call the pinnacle of American manufacturing. Uh, the knife lines, absolutely beautiful. Fit and finish, absolutely beautiful. Initial thoughts, you know, opening it, you got that butter smooth flipper. Uh, you can spidey flick, you can thumb fl flick, you can do everything that you like with this knife, and it does it in a fashion that befits a high-end folder. So, let's get right into my final thoughts. So, First off is the finish. So this knife uh, actually has kind of like a, a multi-tone, two-tone, however you want to uh, classify it, uh, kind of coloration. So on the scales, we have a somewhat uh, stonewashed or bead blast kind of finish. You can see some of the milling lines uh, from milling the titanium. As we move into the knife blade, we actually have a two-tone uh, kind of coloration there. Where the area where Koenig is um, listed out on the blade, this is more of a, a satin or a belt finish uh, on the blade. And then on the actual hollow grind area, we've got that same typical kind of bead blast uh, in that location as well. Uh, hardware is titanium, and we have a backspacer that is blue. Uh, and then on this one, we have the just titanium colored screws throughout with a clip to match everything else. So uh, what do I think about the finish? I think that the finish is, again, extremely well done. After a couple of weeks in the pocket, I don't have any snail trails. I don't have any signs of real wear uh, anywhere on the knife, which is phenomenal when you think about um, a competitor, a partner, however you want to classify it, of Koenig, uh, another Idaho-made blade with CRK. Um, I've owned multiple CRKs, and within a week of having them in my pocket, they had snail trails and scuffs and yada, yada, yada. It's almost like the company puts a subpar finish on their knives so that you will use their spa treatment. Uh, the Koenig knife doesn't give me that impression. So I've crawled in crawl spaces, I've crawled in attics, I've been in and out of all kinds of places, I've been scuffing and uh, busting this up against things. I actually dropped the knife uh, at one point in time when I was doing some work uh, and it hit some concrete and doesn't even have a scratch. On the, on the handle. Mind you, the, the knife was not open at the time, so no damage to the blade, uh, but not even a scratch on, on the handle itself. So fit and finish, uh, the finish performs very, very well, very wear resistant, resistant to snail trails. The only thing that I've noticed, and I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up or not, the uh, bead blast finish and the kind of satin finish on the blade is very smudgy or fingerprinty. Uh, I tend to have, I think, probably a little bit oily skin, and I actually um, just cleaned up from the day's work, and just pressing my thumb against the, the blade, I notice smudge marks, some oil marks on the blade, but that's really, really nitpicky. Uh, if you are buying this knife to use it, the last thing that you're going to worry about are little oil smudges, fingerprints on the blade. You're really wanting to worry more about, okay, if I cut something hefty with this, is the, is the, uh, is the grind uh, going to look all busted up and mangled? And I can tell you from the amount of work that I've done with it that more than likely, unless you're doing something absolutely crazy with it, you're probably not going to have very much in the wear of wear, uh, way of wear lines on this knife. Um, and to give you a little bit of background on um, on how I've used this knife, so we get a lot of the typical stuff like cutting boxes, cutting packages, um, cutting zip ties. Uh, I did have a few pallet items come in, so I was cutting that um, real hard kind of nylon banding 
uh, that goes on there. So just typical kind of stuff, uh, cutting in that. Uh, I've used the knife to shave down the edges when I'm gluing together leather products. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of an overhang and I'll take this knife and do uh, a draw cut across that kind of shimming around. Uh, and it does very, very well uh, for that. I've also planted a number of uh, fruit trees. You probably remember from my, my Synapse video where I was talking about uh, planting cherry trees. Uh, we recently planted a plethora of uh, apple, peach trees, mulberries, more cherries. Uh, and a lot of those have the, the burlap um, root wraps. So they, they take the root ball, they wrap it in burlap. They've got a piece of baler twine across the top. So I've used this knife to cut the baler twine, cut little bits of uh, burlap, cut um, potting soil bags, uh, cut stone bags. You know, this knife has been, you know, through standard everyday uh, type usage uh, for me. I have not sharpened the blade yet. And still pretty much shaving sharp. So I can get the hair to pop off my arms, not as easy as it was when it first came out of the box. But again, I've had a couple of weeks of actual use uh, with this knife. So you wouldn't expect it to really even be shaving sharp, uh, which is an testament to the quality of the M390 steel that this knife is made out of. Moving on to ergonomics uh, of this knife. Knife, uh, just like I said in my early impressions video, fits the hand extremely well. Uh, this cutout area with the, the jimping on the lock bar, and you gotta have this little um, kind of cutout area on the back side of the flipper tab, it just cradles the finger or both of these fingers very, very well. Large size hands fit on it perfectly, and this little thumb ramp on the back side here uh, that is free of jimping actually fits very, very comfortably. So a few times where I was actually really, really gripping uh, this knife, I did not feel like I was going to lose my grip on it, even though most of the surfaces are quite smooth. They've just got like a haptic texture. It's not necessarily a grippy texture. Uh, I never once had a point in time, even with um, sweaty hands, where I thought that this knife was going to go anywhere uh, that I did not want it to go. Uh, doing all manner of work, this knife was comfortable uh, to actually use. The one ergonomic um, complaint that I have is, again, exactly the same as the first impression. As soon as I pulled this out of the box, flipped it a couple of times, I knew that this was going to be something that I did not like. And that is the lock bar. So on the lock bar, uh, there is no chamfer at all in that location. Uh, they just got the jimping. So over time, you know, especially when you were uh, working with your hands. So my hands are pretty heavily calloused. Uh, but as you work more and more and more, and you're doing some of those kind of rough tasks, sometimes your fingers can get a little bit on the raw side. So I was moving some sandstone uh, a few days ago. I've got a big stack of uh, hand-hewn stone. Uh, and every now and again, I need to, to restack it, move it, trim the uh, brush that kind of starts growing up uh, around it. And I was moving some of that. That sandstone's like gripping... 80 pound chunks of sandpaper and it really wears away at your fingers. Uh, I really started to notice when I would use the knife and I was pressing my finger up against that lock bar that the thumb area was getting a little bit raw feeling uh, from that use. Again, if you're not uh, fidgeting with this knife, uh, you're not opening it, closing it, opening it, closing it repeatedly for hours on end and driving everybody around you mad, that's not going to have any effect on the way that you use the knife. If you are one of those people that likes to fidget with a knife and drive everybody crazy, you may notice a little bit of thumb wear uh, in that area. I think that a really easy fix to that uh, would be to just do a very, very slight chamfer. You could even keep the jimping uh, and then that uh, chamfer would not have to go all the way up to where the lock bar impacts against the back of the blade uh, in the lock position. You could just put that little bit on there uh, that would give a little bit of thumb relief uh, and maybe appease more of the people that are, are looking to, to flip this knife uh, for fun factor. <clears throat> the lanyard hole. So 
I've mentioned this again and again and again. I do not ever hold a knife like this or like this. There's no reason for me to jab into something like Jap Jack the Ripper and s just rip through it. Uh, so draw cuts, push cuts, anything like this is not something that I'm going to be uh, using. But for the sake of the review, uh, I did make some attempts to try to use the knife in this manner. And it is very uncomfortable to put your thumb on the end of this knife on that lanyard spot and, you know, make maybe a hard grip and pull. Your thumb's going right up into this kind of pointed area. It's not super comfortable. Now, if you are doing a push cut and your thumb is going up against this uh, backspacer, this lanyard area, it is quite comfortable. But again, why would you be doing this? In, in a standard EDC scenario where you're not, you know, knife fighting the jets uh, in West Side Story, there's no reason for you to hold the knife like this. Um, traditional knife hold, it's absolutely beautiful and ergonomically superior to a large amount of knives uh, that are out there on the market. Uh, the pocket clip works very very well. Uh, nice simple clip, not a deep carry clip, so you are going to have probably about three quarters of an inch of this knife sticking up out of your pocket. So uh, much like my buddy Jake uh, over at Bearded Gear says, if I'm going to have an Arius, I want to show off that I have an Arius. Uh, and enough of this knife is going to stick out of your pocket that anybody that knows anything about the high-end knives uh, that are made in the U.S., they're probably going to know that you've got an Arius in your pocket. So if any of you guys are out there checking out the pocket clips uh, as a guy walks by, this one's going to be an easy one to, to pick out. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. This has very quickly become my number two knife uh, in my collection. And the number one spot, uh, I think, is a pretty coveted one. Uh, that is right now uh, being taken up by the Olamic Soloist, which is just an absolute beast of a blade. And another maker uh, that I think is doing some really great things. And the uh, Soloist review will be coming uh, sometime down the road. Uh, but this is taken up the solid number two spot and may over time uh, come to battle with the soloist for that number one uh, position. So I highly, highly recommend this knife, which is probably nothing new to anybody that is watching this video because there are hundreds and hundreds of Arius reviews out there where they are saying very, very similar things. Um, for someone that hard uses knives in a tradesman contractor type of environment, this knife is extremely well made. It is extremely resilient. It's very, very dependable, uh, keeps a great edge, and is a knife that I would for sure take on any job site that I was heading to um, and would feel comfortable doing just about anything with this knife uh, that you could demand of it. Uh, future plans uh, with this knife. I am actually uh, going to be reaching out to, I believe, River's Edge Cutlery. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of their uh, stuff out there recently. They're a big supporter of my buddy Jake's uh, channel, so I am going to reach out and uh, give them some love. And I think I'm going to get a Cerakote job on this knife. So the plans, uh, just so everybody is kind of in the know, is the hollow grind area, this um, um bead blasted area of the knife and the ferrule, uh, this little carved out area behind the, the spider hole or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm planning on having those DLC black washed and then leaving these flats, that nice, uh, beautiful, uh, satin color swedge on the back DLC black wash as well. Clip DLC, all the hardware black DLC, and then leaving the, um, the scales titanium. And we'll, we'll see if they can see if they can take care of that. And if they can't, we'll figure out something else. But I am so excited about the prospect of keeping this knife permanently that I am going to get it modded uh, so that it fits my carry just a little bit better than it does currently. So thank you guys very much for tuning in to the video. That has been the final thoughts review on the Gen 4 Arius from Koenig. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in, and if you haven't already, 
you may notice this photo right here behind me. Uh, Renegade Provisions Company is the new name, uh, new face of the Renegade EDC store. And one of our most recent items is this knife service tray. Uh, these particular trays are made out of buffalo leather uh, that's about five and a half ounces thick, two layers uh, with laser engraved images on them. Uh, keep an eye out on the website. I will be doing uh, kind of limited drops of a bunch of different um, designs, Mandalorian, Star Wars, uh, Game of Thrones. There are a lot of different things planned uh, for those mats. And I'm gonna be cranking some of those out here in the uh, relatively um, near future. So keep a lookout. Thank you everybody and have a great, great day.